Hello there and welcome back to War Thunder. Today I want to talk about stock grind and how to potentially deal with it with an aircraft, with a prop aircraft in particular, and in particular about the F4U7. Now first a word about the F4U7. I think it has very good looks. I love the 3D model of it. I love to fly with all the courses throughout the nations, throughout the battle ratings and tiers. They just have style. I love the wing shape, I love the shape of the fuselage and the engine noise, the performance, hell even the stock performance. And the F4U7 is no exception to that. So I really, really fancy the reflections and you know the ripping on the on the wings, uh, the visuals. And so I think yeah, a lot of people think that I'm not the very best pilot, but you don't have to be the very best pilot to get something out of the battle. And this is what I want to talk about today. So first of all, I want to talk a few moments in the hangar before I show you a very nice example of how to deal with stock grind on Norway. So as you can see, I just have the 20 millimeter belts, the radiator and the fuselage. So which upgrades do you want to research first? And I think that overall for the F4 use in particular, the NM3 cannons are good. And even the stock belts are not that bad. However, you need to research them in order to unlock the new 20 millimeter cannons, which are essential for not overheating, good accuracy and high rate of fire. In particular, the mean time between failures gets increased by 165%. That's a lot. That's a lot. And also the spread minus 6.3 meters at a distance of 500 meters is insane. So the belts, you can stick with the default belt, but I am very good um, in terms of experience with the universal belts. It worked for me in the last patch, it works in this patch, it profits from the high explosive um, buff, it profits from the armor piercing buff from the last patch. You have a lot of ammunition, nearly 250 rounds per gun, you have four of them, two in each wing, and they just do the job. So um, after that, what do you want to research? Well, the radiator to keep your engine cool while still using more emergency power. And then you need to unlock three upgrades to go to the tier two upgrades. And that would go for the fuselage repair. In general, do not research the bombs and your rockets, even though they might be your um, desired goal with the mantra snap rockets in particular. Then what should you go for next? Well, first of all, the airframe, then of course the compressor, after that the wings repair and the engine, and before that, of course, at the first tier three upgrade, the new 20 millimeter cannons. After that, I'd go for the engine injection and the cover, and then you can either research the G-suit, but you also then could focus on the ordnance. And you know, also this ordnance uh, adds a lot of drag and adds a lot of weight. So that requires more engine power and the best of performance from the planes, from the plane in the first place to even use it in tank RB. So that would be the upgrades. How to behave in a battle with a stock aircraft, um, not talking about jets, but in particularly props, let's find out. And of course, it happened to be a battle on Norway. And I think it is a very good showcase and it runs everything perfect. Now, this is not an ace match, a little bit of spoiler ahead, but the results prove me right. So what am I looking for? Well, I am not looking for the initial performance fight, you know, the race to the clouds. No, we're not talking here about Pike's Peak, but we are talking here about, um, you know, the initial climbing stage. Uh, of the aircraft and the German aircraft are pretty good at this, especially the BF 109s and just Griffin Spitfires could counter them if the allied players would bother to climb at all. In this battle actually I couldn't complain and the allied team actually worked together. So, um, you know, into the direction of the German bombing points to the right you could go and there you could escort your bombers and there is the actual initial fight. You also could go to the former Flag Island, uh, which is A, and this is a point of interest. Why? Because there is actually some action going on. Landing crafts are going for A to capture it 
and they are around about well somewhere between A and the uh, light cruisers and there are also very often some bombers going for the allied bombing points and I already have detected somebody. So despite being not the very best climber, the Corsairs in particular, but also especially when you're stuck, you still should bother to climb a little bit. The only way why I'm not climbing here is because I already have detected a target. And even one kill is worth it when you're completely stuck. I'm talking about a player kill. Even if you trade, you are not a penalty to your team. And this is where I often rant about fully upgraded P-47s, P-51s and some other allied aircraft going for the howitzers and the AAA on the uh, flag island. That is just, or you know, the former flag um, airfield. That is just nonsense. That's just uh, putting a good plane to waste, not even bothering the fight. So here we can see uh, there is a German bomber at work. It looks like a Heinkel 177 and they are, you know, not that uncommon. They are fantastic bombers, fantastic payload, good defensive firepower, fantastic overall performance. But also they carry three Fritz X. So a lot of the people now want to research them. So I have actually given this guy the chance to drop and now he is at the end of the food chain. While he is firing at me, I just uh, can make work of my 420mm cannons and they don't disappoint. I think the American 20mm were always nice, especially on props. Again, not talking here about jets. So that's now the first kill. That was just one bomber in the vicinity and sadly no German aircraft went for the patrol boats. On the other hand, the patrol boats or landing boats can now uh, go to A, decapture it and eventually capture it so that we actually have something else than our aircraft carriers to land on. And not every aircraft is suited for landing on an aircraft carrier. Yeah, I know the Iron Armenian lands everything on a carrier because... Because, yeah. <laughs> so now I want to reclimb. So what now happens is that the furball um, in the direction of uh, our bombing points or the German bombing points, you know, the ones on the right, um, that there is some furball going on. Aircraft are dueling each other, they're dropping altitude, they're dropping altitude, they receive damage, they're wasting ammunition. So when now I come in uh, later on and I just can pick off one or two aircraft, I help my team and I'm uh, leveling out the odds. So this is my initial thought. There is no use of me dying early on and then just being dead. Um, so it is a, a combination of side climbing, situational awareness, using the knowledge about the map and where the enemy is usually going and just putting this to use. What the allied team in this match allowed me to do is allowing me to do it, allowing to make a plan and actually using it. And this is nice because very often allied teams just don't bother to climb and just dive very easily to the German teams which are usually very well disciplined and um, just having the altitude advantage. And even if there are some allied planes climbing then they are heavily outnumbered. And in a one versus one they might have the upper hand versus a German aircraft. Um, you know it also depends a bit on the pilot but also the plane's performance is not that unimportant but eventually they just get um, picked off one by one and then the German team comes in in force to clean up the remaining ground attacking aircraft which usually do not have the impact on a game to decide the outcome of a game. Um, in the past this was on some maps different but you know for a very long time they very rarely could win a game by ground striking. Now I see some action going on lower and I want to investigate. Maybe this is my chance to um, go in and, you know, leveling the odds or going with the odds into my direction. I saw a dot here, a black dot. I'm not quite sure if you can see it. Um, and then I realized just in a moment, hey, wait, a hold on. He's going between, uh, um, you know, some ridge lines. He's going for this airfield to land there. So um, that would be stupid to go after him. Now, 
Um, there is a sandwich, and um, yeah, two aircraft got killed. The P-47 got the P-49K, and the Focke Wolf now got two kills on the Vyvern and on the previously successful P-47M. Look at my speed. This is the fantastic thing about the courses, even when they're stuck. In the long run, they can go really, really fast. And just in a moment, you can see the spread of my aircraft guns. So I'm aiming in a head-on, and then I pull up out of the line of shooting. Um, I have so much speed, so much energy, it would be really not that smart to put it to waste early on. And so I do a little bit of energy fighting, I roll a little bit around, and then I choose the Focke Wolf D-Series as a target because he is very conveniently below me. And a single hit just uh, gives him a crit and then a few crits, a uh, few shots more, make him go boom. Was his name Mike? No. So you're used to bad jokes being free on this channel and the other aircraft also got killed. So now we have to go on. But then for quite some time, nothing more happens. Now eventually I saw here an enemy P-109 at higher altitude and I wanted to, well, say hello to him by putting here on my white smoke. And no, that is this time not a synonym for a French war flag. <laughs> so I turn into him and he just decides to not go after me, which could have ended badly here for me. And I want to trick him a little bit lower so eventually you know that he loses his altitude advantage and we can outturn him he was pretty defensive uh, early on and now we know why because his friend arrives at even higher altitude so he tries to leveling out the odds now i try to gain some altitude from my speed then to turn around and hopefully help my team i'm no use in a direct energy fight versus a probably fully upgraded b of 109 um, I'm completely stuck, except for the um, ammo belts. And now I must not wait too long for um, the chance to get back into the fight. Because if my team members die too early, then I'm left with uh, two capable enemy fighters. And again, I'm stuck. If I do not hit uh, the shots in a head-on, then I think that's really, really bad for me. So again, I head on, I shoot at long range without the hope of hitting anything, despite that I get a hit, but it's not really drastic. And now I do a little bit of a um, baiting maneuver, I'm going in a low stall fight, and or a low altitude stall fight, and I have team members that actually had a shot on the K4. Despite me being stuck, I still can turn in such a way that the B109 K4 ends up in front of me. And then we spray a few shots and we hit him once and now with his final breath where I take him down I jam three out of my four 20 millimeter cannons so I already have three kills I think I have my uh, I've done my job and now I have to RTB so returning to base has several different advantages you can refuel you can rearm you can repair the jammed guns, you can repair eventual battle damage, but also, very importantly, you can reset the internal overheat uh, temperature jumping timer um, and you can simply reset it. What do I mean by this? So you fly your aircraft and you web the hell out of it. War emergency power, 110% of throttle, whatever you want to call it, and that brings the engine to overheat. Now, if you are already in the orange, a timer is activated and eventually um, it triggers um, a mechanism where then the critical temperature jumps down at lower temperatures and suddenly you're in the red and it's blinking and you have to reduce throttle. And if you are at that stage and you are in the middle of a fight, that's not good. So that's another reason. So I have all the ammunition, I have all the performance and I have the web overheat timer reset now let's fight um i have to be honest here i picked this match because there was a nice conversation in the chat and i have the three kills and the plan and the footage where i can talk about it just align itself perfectly does every match uh, go like this no but i think if um, you have 10 three repairs on a silver plane or a tech tree version and on some or on the premium planes it's more is it 
20 or 30, I'm not quite sure. But so you can use those battles to get some essential upgrades and after you get them uh, with some uh, time investment and some tactical thinking, you then can switch over to the actual anti-fighter fight and then potentially get more kills. But um, I think this is very, very important to get actually something out of a battle. Now the last enemy here, um, well, he tried to land and crash. Now, there is one problem with this. It looks like he is a noob and he crashed, but it also could be that he has received battle damage and then War Thunder's uh, assist or kill um, registering system just failed. This happens rather often these days and is highly annoying if, again, you are in a stock plane. But I digress, we had a nice match, we had three kills, the plan worked, I was not a liability to my team. And that's all that I'm asking for. And let's have a quick look at the post-battle results. And there we go. There we go. Nearly 65,000 silver lines and nearly 7,000 re uh, vehicle research points and also 5,000 modification research points. Together with the previous battle, I now unlock the radiator. I have to unlock the fuselage repair and also it uh, rips out a chunk of the airframe research so you can see that battle was worth it it was fun it was rewarding and this is what i want to show you um, this is more like an educational video rather than a uh, entertaining one nevertheless i hope you enjoyed it and please give it a like if you did subscribe if you want to see more and we'll see each other in the skies of war thunder